Yo, 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 what's up, YouTube? Dirty Dan Gaming coming back with another Rise of Kingdoms video. And today we are going to officially be kicking off our beginners uh, guide playlist. We do have the jumper project that we are a part of, Veni Vidi Vici, that is kicking off in a little under two weeks now. <clears throat> so we're really starting to prime the channel up for the beginners and for the newbies who are coming on into the scene of Rise of Kingdoms. So without further ado, let's jump into our first beginner's guide place by talking about which civilization is the best to start off with let's check it out okay so upon opening rise of kingdoms this is going to be the very first thing that you see welcome to rise of kingdoms and then your welcome message and yada 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 and then it is going to ask you to pick a civilization now each civilization that you pick is going to grant you with the commander that is being shown okay so <clears throat> you have over here for rome this is going to be mr Scipio, and you can see up here starting commander you're also going to be getting some nice buffs that come along with the civilization that you're going to pick as well as a specialty unit i'm going to keep this really cut and dry for you guys i'm going to run through these civilizations but i'm going to keep this really cut and dry i'm not going to give you the reasons why this one is better why this one is not better I'm just going to give you the best because there's really only two options that you should be thinking of when you are starting a new account. So first we have Rome with uh, Mr. Scipio and you are going to be able to change your civilization later as well, okay? Uh, next you have Germany with Mr. Hermann. Keep in mind, if you do decide to deter from whatever suggestion I'm going to give you on these um, on the starting civilization, civilization that you pick, the commander being shown does not translate into the troop type that you are going to be working on. So Scipio, he is a leadership commander, but they are, Rome is going to grant you with an infantry based unit type for your specialty units. Germany is going to grant you with Hermann. He is an archer commander, but you can see here that the Teutonic Knight, which is a cavalry based unit, is going to be your specialty unit. So just keep that in mind, okay? Britain, we have Boudica. She is going to be an integration commander and she and Britain will grant you archers. France, again, another integration commander with Joan of Arc, but they will grant you the specialty unit of infantry throwing axemen. Vikings, finally, we have Bjorn Ironside, who is an infantry commander, which will grant you the infantry based units, the berserkers. China, another one that could throw you off. Sun Tzu, who is going to be an infantry based commander, but will grant you, but China will grant you archer specialty units. Japan is another one that can throw you off. Kusunoki, who is an archer commander, and Japan was actually the very first civilization that I picked in my journey of Rise of Kingdoms way back years ago. Um, he is an archer commander. But Japan will grant you the specialty unit of the Samurai, which is infantry. Perea, another one that throws you off. You'll get Yulji. He is an infantry commander, but Korea grants you the archer um, unit, the Huarang. Next, one that actually lines up, Spain with Mr. Pelagius. They will grant you the Conquistadors, which is a cavalry based unit, and Pelagius is a cavalry commander. Next, we have Arabia which will grant you Baybars and the specialty unit, the Mamluk. They are both cavalry based commanders and unit types. Next, you have the Ottoman Empire featuring Osman. He is a leadership commander, but the Ottoman Empire will grant you the Janissary, which is an archer unit. And lastly, you have the Byzantium, M um, Byzantium civilization, which will give you the Cataphract, which is a cavalry unit and Belisarius who is a cavalry commander so just keep that in mind that there are some commanders that if again if you go off the suggestion that i'm going to give you you will get a a head start on the commander that you're going to be picking as there is a little bit of a mode that is going to give you free goodies to upgrade your commanders and we will discuss that in a later video which is going to be my expedition video so be sure to check that out now which civilization to pick we have quite a few of them here and we actually just got a leak as well that we are going to be getting more 
or an additional civilization coming in the new year for 2022. So this might change, but I really, really highly doubt that it is going to. So what is the best civilization, Dan? All in all, I believe China is going to be the best civilization that you can pick. You're going to get a troop defense of 3%, which is going to spread across all of your troops. It's not going to be specific, like say Spain, where there, it is only giving you cavalry defense. China is giving you a universal 3% defense for all of your troops. It's going to give you a little bit of action point recovery <clears throat> and very important in the beginning stages of the game, building speed. So yes, you are going to be getting some nice buffs from the China civilization, but that is not the main core reason. At the heart of this game of Rise of Kingdoms, it really, really comes down to your commanders. And then as you progress into the late game, it is going to really matter about the equipment that you have on those commanders as well. Sun Tzu being one of the best, le best commanders that you can pick in this early game, he is going to be an epic tier commander where you will have legendaries who are going to be better than him. But in the early game, he just does a lot of things really, really well that I think you can't pass up on. He's great for he's great for your PVE events as well as your PVP. So I think that just with this commander that you have to go and pick China. He's going to serve you very well going into your first KVK. And again, he just does a little bit of everything very well. You're not going to get another commander like this who is going to have the utilities that Sun Tzu is going to offer. Now, if you didn't want to go with China and you wanted to kind of veer off a little bit, I would suggest maybe going with Britain. Um, the buffs aren't really the greatest. The troop training speed is pretty okay. Archer attack is okay. And your garrison, ally garrison capacity is okay. Again, it really is more about the commanders and she is a very friendly commander for the free to play um, player, player base and the community. But I just think that with some of the other commanders that you're going to have featured within Rise of Kingdoms that you could skip her in the very beginning stages of the game. So a lot of people like to say that Boudica is the best because of her ability to do forts and kill barbarians. Well, again, you're just really getting a head start on the commanders on the commander that you're going to pick in accordance with your civilization. You're going to get all of these commanders that you're being shown anyway, because again, they're epic level. They're not the legendary, very hard ones to obtain. It's just simply a head start. And I think with a, a future commander like for Ethelflaedon, a commander that you're going to be getting for free, although it's going to take a little bit of time. She is a peacekeeping commander that's going to be helping you with your barbarians and barbarian forts and all that stuff as well. So I just don't really think that it's really necessary anymore for people to say that Britain is a good starting choice because Boudica is not really a, a PvP commander, whereas Sun Tzu very much is. You are going to be using Sun Tzu probably for the better part of a year, <clears throat> especially if you are a free to play or a low spending player. Now, I just want to throw an honorable mention out to the Viking civilization <clears throat> as a as a PVP commander. I think Bjorn Ironside, he still is in this late game going to have some kind of usability. He is one of the Vikings is the newest civilization that Lilith has introduced into Rise of Kingdoms. So Bjorn is the newest epic commander to feature in Rise of Kingdoms as well. I just think that Bjorn kind of does have a place in your first KVK in your first few KVKs. And I think that he is definitely worth giving an honorable mention. He is he is good enough as a commander to be used all the way up to your KVK three until you can really start getting your hands on some of those better legendary commanders that you can use in the field. So I'm going to stick with my my ultimate and final decision where I think China should be the civilization that most people go for. Sun Tzu, again, he just offers so much in terms of what he can do. The buffs here are pretty nice. You're getting the action point recovery, which is very nice for free to play players because that is what you're going to be using to do your PVE events. You're going to need your action points to do that. And then the building speed is very crucial in the very beginning stages of the game where you are focusing a lot on developing the buildings that you have as well as your research and technology. But the buffs that you're getting from research and technology aren't as high as this 5% of the building speed. And honestly, I think you're doing a little bit more 
heavy lifting in terms of building in the early game anyway. So sticking to my sticking to my suggestion here, I think every player should go with China. Get your Sun Tzu up. It's going to be he's going to be helping you in the field very much so. And if you don't like that choice, you can always change your civilization later, which we will do a future video on because I don't think that most players should stick with China. I think as soon as you get up to, you know, once you start creeping up onto that T5 or most of your buildings are done, I think that it is definitely worth a change to move off from China. Again, the primary reason of why you are picking this civilization is pretty much for the commander. I'm not gonna go into it all over again, but Sun Tzu is the man. So I hope this video helped. If you guys enjoyed, the vi enjoyed, please consider slapping a like and subscribing down below. It's all totally free. You can change your mind later if you don't like me and leave a comment down below if you want us to go over anything else for beginner guides and it also help the YouTube algorithm for the channel. With that, enjoy the rest of your weekend, guys. I'm out, have a good one. Thank you so much for the support as always. I'm out, have a good one, peace.